President Silva has disgraced the memory of six million Jews murdered by the Nazis. Welcome to the U.S. Army YouTube channel. The Middle East is currently experiencing the most dynamic days in recent years. The war that Hamas started has now escalated to a very different level. Israel continues to have a busy day after the Iranian attack. As we know, the aggressor groups supporting Hamas are attacking Israel on a regular basis. Israel continues to respond immediately to these attacks. In addition to the controversy caused by Iran's attack, Israeli forces continue their operations in Gaza territory at full speed. The details of Israel's operation in the Isfahan region of Iran are becoming clear. Israeli rampage supersonic missiles destroyed Isfahan base air defense. Iran's foreign minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian told newspaper Friday night that what happened last night, Thursday night, was not a strike, and they were more like toys that our children play with, not drones. Western news outlets now beg to differ. Satellite images and new analyzes published Sunday morning reveal the damage caused to the Shikari Air Base in Isfahan that was hit last Friday morning, most likely by Israel. In the analysis, published by the BBC, the damage to the radar of the S-300 air defense system located northwest of the Air Force base in question is visible. According to two Iranian officials who commented on the Israeli assault, Israel targeted an S-300 anti-aircraft system situated at a military facility in Isfahan province. Their claims were corroborated by satellite imagery scrutinized by the New York Times. While it remains unclear what weapon or weapons were used in the attack, satellite imagery has detected evidence of damage at the airbase, reported. An image taken by Umbra Space, aerospace company in Santa Barbara, California, on April 15, depicts an S-300 air defense system situated at the northwestern edge of the Shikari Air Base. The system consists of multiple vehicles outfitted with radar systems, identifiable missile launchers, and supplementary equipment. Following the strike on Friday, another Umbra space image reveals damage and debris surrounding a component, likely a radar, which has also undergone slight displacement. Other vehicles appear to have been relocated from the area. On Saturday night, CAN 11 News reported estimates that the weapon that was used by Israel overnight Friday was the Rampage missile. According to Elbit, the Rampage, which has been sold to India in December 2022, is a long-range supersonic air-to-ground precision strike missile that features high survivability and operational flexibility and enables salvo strikes against high-value targets. According to Israel Defense, the UK and the UAE are also interested in the new Israeli missile, which means that the attack on the Iranian base was at the same time proportionate retaliation and a sales pitch. Heck, Israel needs the money. Look at this part of the description of the rampage on Elbit's website. The new weapon enables salvo strikes against high-value targets such as air force bases and control towers, air defense sites, munition storage, bunkers, logistics centers, communication infrastructures, and other infrastructure facilities. Elbit says the rampage is based on advanced technologies and designed for fast response and precision strikes. The innovative air-to-ground missile features, pre-programmable or in-flight mission profile, navigation satellite system INS with anti-jam capabilities, general-purpose warhead and fire-and-forget capabilities. Also, Rampage is compatible with a variety of aircraft and features, various methods of aircraft to weapon interface, standalone, via avionic system, or wireless with mobile device inside the cockpit. You want to know how compatible the Rampage is with a variety of aircraft? The Indian Navy, which purchased the missiles in 2022, flies Soviet MiG 29K warplanes, aka the Mikoyan, and the Rampage has no trouble being fitted on its wings. The Rampage carries a warhead of 330 pounds of explosive material and is capable of course corrections in mid-flight. One last thing, Israel's F-35s are able to fire the Rampage away from Iran's border, over the horizon. Meanwhile, Israeli weapons damaged Iranian air defenses without being detected. Israel had decided earlier not to launch a full-scale attack against Iran, 
and instead decided on a quieter tactic to send a message with the aim of ending the cycle of attacks. Iran's S-300 air defense in Isfahan, which protects its key Natanz nuclear site, was destroyed without detection by long-range missiles fired from outside Iranian airspace, sources and multiple satellite imagery posts confirmed by Saturday. The New York Times, Fox News and other foreign reports said that Israel undertook the attack, though Jerusalem has been silent about it. It was still unclear Saturday whether drones had played some role in the attack as well. U.S. Senator Marco Rubio tweeted, Israel has the ability to conduct strikes against targets inside Iran without entering Iranian airspace from aircraft over Syrian and Iraqi airspace. Both Rubio's comment and foreign reports indicated that the first stage of a two-stage Israeli-made missile may have been found in Iraq and may have been fired from there. Foreign reports said that the missiles were not fired from Iranian, Israeli, or Jordanian airspace. Strategic attack sends message to Iran. Such an attack could have two intended effects. The impact of messaging to the Iranians that their nuclear facilities could have also been hit, or could easily be hit in the future, and letting the Islamic Republic end the crisis by denying any real damage. Unlike Iran's nuclear facilities at Natanz, Karaj, and elsewhere, where Tehran has had to acknowledge their destruction in the past because they are open to visits from the International Atomic Energy Agency, Iran can keep the public away from seeing its losses of the S-300 missile defense system other than via satellite imagery. But the loss is significant in the sense that the S-300 is the most advanced anti-aircraft system the Islamic Republic possesses, which it spent years pressing Russia to sell it. On the other hand, this attack could be called much less bruising of Iran's attack capabilities than the one by Israel that destroyed huge numbers of its drone fleet in February 2022, which former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has publicly confirmed. Further, the attack did not directly touch Iran's nuclear program, which means that the program has not been set back. The Jerusalem Post was the first to confirm that long-range missiles had been used in the attack early Friday morning. The New York Times was the first to confirm Israeli involvement. Iran, it appears falsely, has claimed that there was no damage and that it shot down a few minor drones that tried to attack. On Sunday morning, Iran International published footage of the damage caused to the Isfahan base as a result of the strike. The report came shortly after local sources reported explosions in Isfahan in central Iran, in the Asuwaida Governorate of southern Syria, and in the Baghdad area and Babel Governorate of Iraq early Friday morning. A U.S. official then told CNN that the Iranian target was not nuclear. Videos from Isfahan appeared to show Iranian air defenses activated in the skies over the area. A senior U.S. official also confirmed this on the Friday morning of the attack, stating, We were not surprised, while also telling Walla that Israel informed the U.S. in advance of the strike. The Iranian semi-official Fars news agency reported on Friday that an explosion was heard in Kajavaristan, east of Isfahan and near the Isfahan International Airport. Fars stressed that the cause of the explosion was unknown as of yet. Fars and other Iranian news agencies reported that air defenses were seemingly activated near Isfahan in response to small drones. Iranian air defenses were also activated in Tabriz in northwestern Iran on Friday morning after a suspicious object was spotted in the air, according to FARS. According to Bloomberg News, Israeli officials notified the U.S. on Thursday that they plan to launch a strike in the next 24 or 48 hours. Syrian reports on Friday morning indicated airstrikes had also targeted sites belonging to the Syrian army in the As-Sueda and Dara governorates of southern Syria. The explosions came as Israel promised to respond to a massive drone and missile attack conducted by Iran on April 14th against Israel. The Iranian attack came in response to an alleged Israeli airstrike that targeted a building next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus and that killed Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a senior IRGC commander in charge of Iran's operations in Syria and Lebanon. In January 2023, a mix of Western intelligence and foreign sources told the Post that despite Iranian claims to the contrary, a drone attack on Iran at Isfahan, in a similar general area to the attack Friday morning, was a tremendous success. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video to learn news from the Middle East instantly. Thank you for watching us.